All right, let's bring in Laura Trump, Fox News contributor and daughter-in-law to the former president. Good morning to you, Laura. Good morning, guys. Good Great morning. to be with you. Good to have you on. What did your father-in-law, what did your husband, what did you think? What was your reaction to seeing Donald Trump there on the border? Well, I think it was fantastic to see somebody actually go down and take charge of the situation. I mean, I'll tell you that President Trump, being the former president, sure got a lot more accomplished in his visit to the southern border than the acting border czar Kamala Harris did with her photo op trip to a place that was 800 miles away from where the real problem uh, happens to be down on the southern border. So I think the Border Patrol are happy that they finally have somebody there supporting them, somebody that is backing them up. Um, it, it was certainly certainly nice to hear somebody talk about the fact that we have to address the problem. You know, you hear the Democrats all day long, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, try to tiptoe around this and not talk about it because it is a crisis. They don't want to admit it and they don't want it uh, to, to get, uh, you know, be, be on their backs, quite frankly. They're happy to have an open border. They ran on an open border policy. So thank goodness the former president is down there at the southern border taking control of the situation. And what he said yesterday, guys, was so accurate. If they had just done nothing, it would have been better than, than what they've done. Donald Trump had it set up so well. We had record low border crossings under his tenure as president. And now you see the disaster that has ensued in a short amount of time with the Biden-Harris administration. So thank goodness somebody is paying attention, former President Trump. Well, and, you know, America, when he was running for president, Donald Trump said, I'm going to do something about the southern border. I'm going to build a wall going to make Mexico pay for it. Uh, he could not get Congress to pass the money, and so he declared a state of emergency and uh, redirected some money from the Pentagon. That was the way he was able to get the money to build the portions of the wall that uh, got built, Laura. Yeah, that's right. Well, look, sometimes uh, you have to take matters into your own hands and do what is best for the American people as president. Uh, we knew that the Democrats were never going to buy into the idea of building a wall. They uh, deemed it to be a terrible idea. We know that walls work, and, and you certainly have seen the result when Donald Trump was in office. Um, and all we need to do is complete a very small section of the wall. I heard you guys talking about it a, a few minutes ago. How sad is it that it's, it's basically been paid for? We have all of the supplies there. Everything is ready to go, yet the Biden administration refuses just to put up these sections of wall. It's already done. I don't know why you would not want to do what is right for the American people. I don't know why you wouldn't, wouldn't want to do what's right for the people that are right. making this dangerous journey. De-incentivize de them to come here. Tell them we got a wall. You're not going to be allowed into America. It seems to make sense. But uh, again, I don't expect to hear a whole lot of that from the Biden-Harris White House. All right, let's talk about uh, what is happening, and that is uh, the fund the police, and they're trying to reverse it and put it on Republicans. I don't think anyone uh, looks at this seriously. I don't think it passed the laugh test. But one person's alarmed by it that wasn't briefed on the fact that they were supposed to do a jujitsu with it is Congressman James Clyburn. Uh, he was speaking out against to fund the police. He's always said this is one of the dumbest things he's ever heard in his life. And here's his quote. Uh, when asked why he was endorsing a moderate candidate instead of the Bernie Sanders chief of staff for Martha Fudge's seat uh, <clears throat> since she went to the White House, he said this, what I try to do is demonstrate by precept and example how we ought to proceed as a party. When I spoke out against sloganeering like burn baby burn in the 1960s and defund the police, which I think is cutting the throats of the party, I know exactly where my constituents are. They are against that, and I'm against that. Of course, in South Carolina, they do not want to defund the police. You know that being from North Carolina. Yeah, I agree with Congressman Clyburn here. He's exactly right. Nobody wants to defund the police if they are being a reasonable and rational human being. The idea that this was going to somehow help anybody is absolutely insane. We have seen the result of what defunding the police does. It actually hurts the most these inner city communities that all of the BLM rioters who have been chanting defund the police were supposedly trying to help. Uh, it is hurting their communities the most. We know that crime is skyrocketing, murders are up. I mean, it is, it's a really scary thing to see happen in the United States of America. So uh, yeah, I guess he didn't get the memo, guys, that uh, all of a sudden they were gonna try and flip the script. Uh, but he's exactly right, defund the police is an 
idiotic, terrible idea, um, and you see the result of it now, sadly, in so many of our big cities. It's why everybody is leaving. People are leaving New York in droves. People are leaving California, Illinois. It's terrible to see, but it is because people do not want to live in a lawless society, plain and simple. And crime is through the roof. All right. Uh, you know, I'm sure you were watching earlier this week. We showed the image of Gwen Berry, who came in third uh, over the weekend in the hammer throw at the Olympic trials. And during the playing of the national anthem, she turned her back. Uh, you know, and and she said she has since said, "Look, I love my country." And there's been a lot of fallout from it. And as it turns out, uh, apparently an old photo of her holding an American flag went viral. It appears on her old uh, personal website touting her many accomplishments. There he is, she is quite proud about uh, the American flag yeah. in that picture. And Laura, remember she said when she was asked about it, she said the national anthem has never represented her. But there she is in an old photo holding up the flag. Why the switch, do you think? Yeah, well, I don't think anybody is surprised to see this. This is where the Internet actually uh, can come back and haunt you, folks. Uh, you posted a photo proudly holding the American flag, and yet, uh, you know, we saw that ridiculous display from her whenever she came in third place there. How disrespectful that was to the other women that she competed with. Um, look, I think we all know that this was a stunt. This was an attempt, a very selfish attempt at that, by her to make a name for herself, to cause some waves. I know she probably wanted an endorsement from somebody of some sort, and she thought this was the way to do it. Well, how disrespectful to America, how disrespectful to our troops, Groups. You know what? If she wants to compete under uh, the United States of America, I think she owes an apology to every American. I think she owes an apology to every soldier that has died fighting for our flag, to every family that has lost someone who has died fighting for our flag. So it's not that easy to just turn around and say, well, I don't hate America. You very clearly disrespected every American. You disrespected the woman you competed with, and you disrespected right. our flag. So um, I think it's very clear she did it for a selfish reason. And it's disgusting to see we do not need to have athletes like this uh, that our children are going to look up to. We need better representatives mm -hmm. for the United States. Go compete somewhere else unless you want to apologize. She did the impossible. She escaped from North Korea, got through Mongolia, had a rough time as a uh, sold off to slavery, beautifully got herself free in South Korea and came over to Colombia for a college education, looked around and cannot believe how ungrateful Americans are for the country that they have. We wanted to put Gwen Berry's story up next to Yan Mi Park, who's the North Korean defector from Colombia and now a human rights activist. And here's what she said. In North Korea, people who are actually oppressed don't even know they're oppressed. The fact that she's complaining oppression and systemic racism, that she does not understand that she's so privileged. She's literally spoiled being free so much in this amazing country. I was a slave. I was sold in China in 2007 as a child at 13 years old. The people actually going slavery under Chinese Communist Party in North Korea. There is actual injustice, and the fact that she is complaining about this country, the most tolerant country, she doesn't really understand, I think, history. And, Laura, you had mentioned a sponsor. Turns out, uh, we discovered yesterday that uh, Gwen Berry is sponsored by a defund the police uh, organization that apparently is getting their money from Puma Shoes. Yeah, there you go. Well, that, that young woman you just heard from there, the defector from North Korea, is exactly right. Go to any country in the world other than America, um, you will not have it as good. We are the greatest country in the world. And um, I, I really hope that people start realizing that and stop falling for the nonsense. We should all stand up proudly, put our hands over our hearts, and respect our American flag. I sure hope we see it at this year's Olympics. And I'm sure we're going to see it a lot this weekend with the 4th of July. Thank you very much for joining us live. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, guys.